All right, in this video, we're going to work through a detailed calculation of how to calculate the pH change when we add an acid or a base to a buffer. And we're going to treat this using an ice chart, or actually a special chart. We're going to call an ICF chart. And then we'll use the Handelson Hasselbalch equation. But the thing to remember is it's almost always worth working with moles here. So, for example, let's go ahead and set up a problem here. So, let's say we add 0.1 moles of hydrochloric acid. So, it's a strong acid to a buffer. We're going to add it to 2 liters of a buffer. And the buffer itself is going to be 1 molar in acetic acid. So, my favorite acid. So, vinegar is what, about 3 or 5 percent acetic acid. Yum, 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 yum. And it's also going to be 1.25 molar. The, those are actually not minuses, I'm sorry, in the conjugate base to acetic acid. It's a sodium acetate. And again, remember, the sodium's job is just a counter ion, right? It's got to counteract the charge on the acetate ion. And sodium is perfectly neutral, so we don't have to worry about it affecting anything. So we need one more little bit of detail. So we know the Ka for acetic acid. And Ka for acetic acid is 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5. So that's acetic acid at room temperature. All right, so we're going to start with number of moles. So we need to find the number of moles of the weak acid and its conjugate base. So here's our acetic acid. We've got two liters of buffer, and our acetic acid is one molar. So that means there's one mole per liter. I'm just going to write HA because I'm lazy per liter. So we can see that is two moles of the acetic acid. All right, let's look at the number of moles of its conjugate base, the number of moles of acetate. Remember, the sodium has absolutely no effect at all. So we've got two liters of solution, and it is one and a quarter molar, so there's one and a quarter moles of acetate per liter. Okay, we can see two times 1.25 is 2.5 moles of our acetate ion. Okay, so let me go to another page, and let's go ahead and run the calculation through. So I suppose the first thing we need to do is decide what the chemical reaction is. And that hydrochloric acid is a strong acid. And so it's going to completely neutralize any acetate in solution. So the acetate is the base, remember. And so its job is to neutralize any acids that are added. So the strong acid is going to push a proton onto acetate and convert it into acetic acid. So we're just protonating it. And what we have left behind is the chloride ion. And the chloride ion, essentially, we can ignore. In fact, we could have just written this as essentially an H plus source over here. All right, we're going to write initial here, but we are going to work not in concentration units, not in pressure, because that's silly. We're going to work in moles. So we're going to start with our 0.1 moles of hydrochloric acid. We saw that we had, uh, what was it, 2.5 moles of acetate ion, and we had 2 moles of acetic acid. And the chloride, we don't have any present. In fact, the chloride, we can pretty much just ignore all throughout this. Now, we're going to write the change line. Now, for an equilibrium, we would write X's here. But because the acid is strong, this is going to be a 100% conversion. If you like, you can calculate the equilibrium constant for this. And it's extremely large. It's like 10 to the positive 14 or so. Or well, maybe it's not that large, but it's pretty darn large anyway. So you can assume it's a complete conversion. So this is essentially a limiting reactant problem. We can see that the HCl would be used up before we had uh, acetate running out. So we'd still have some acetate left. So that means it's still a buffer. We haven't compromised our buffer ability. But we can see that our change here is going to be minus 0.1 moles, minus 0.1 moles. And then because it's 1 to 1 to 1 to 1, we're going to go up by, oops, sorry, 0.1 and up by 0.1 moles here. So the final, so final instead of equilibrium, is going to be the initial plus the change. So we've completely wiped out our HCl. We've reduced our acetate to 2.4 moles. And we've increased our acetic acid to 2.1 moles. And our chloride, right, we don't really care about chloride. We can ignore this whole column here. Because this is a neutral ion. It's going to have absolutely no effect at all upon the concentration. All right, so how are we going to find the pH here. So we're going to find the pH using the Handelson Hasselbalch equation. So pH is pKa, that's the minus log of Ka, plus the log of the base over the acid concentration. And these are the weak acid and weak bases, right? So you can't use the concentration of the strong acid here, not that we're giving it in the problem, but these are only these conjugate pairs, right? The two things in the buffer. So we can find the pKa by taking the negative log of Ka, so the negative log of 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5. 
and the concentration of the base, well, that would be the number of moles of base, so we saw that was 2.4 moles, um, divided by the volume. So I'm not sure what the volume of the solution is or was. Maybe it's still 2 liters, but we've added some acid to it, so it might be a little bit larger. However, we can go ahead and calculate the concentration of the acid. So that is the acetic acid, 2.1 moles. And again, we divide by the volume of the solution. Now, the really cool thing is, whatever the volume of the solution is on the top, it's the same as on the bottom. And so we can actually just cancel that off. So we really don't need to even know that. So at this point here, we can just kind of number crunch away. So the pKa is 4.74. I'll keep an extra guard digit there, 4.744. Let's see, this ratio is bigger than 1, so the log will be bigger than 0. So it'll be a positive value, so 0 0.0580. So this is going to have three significant figures. And when we logarithm it, it becomes three decimal places. So because that has two decimals and that has three, the final answer can only be reported to two decimal places. So at the end of the day, we can really only say 4.80. And that was two decimal places. Now, we didn't calculate in the problem, but maybe it's worth calculating on your own. So the original pH, if I use the Hendelson Hasselbalch to find the original pH of the buffer, the original pH was actually... 4.84. Oops, I need my drawing tool here. So 4.84. So we can go ahead and we can see that the pH dropped by 0.4, or sorry, 0.04 of a unit. So by adding quite a lot of hydrochloric acid, actually a tenth of a mole, the pH dropped from 4.84 to 4.8. So not a large change at all. But uh, if we didn't have a buffered solution, this drop would have been absolutely enormous. In fact, we can calculate that maybe in another lecture.